shining armor. The western sky beyond the Kalindra spaceport was turning red with sunset, and in the east a cloud of monsters descended on the dying day. They were colossal creatures with wings that blotted out the stars, and sinuous bodies that were covered in glossy black scales. They ducked and swooped through the air, letting out piercing cries that shook the surrounding hills. Gouts of fire belched from their maws, and, as one, they descended. Looks like they're back from more, Griffith said over the comm link. Quadrant defense positions. Let the flak do its job and hold your fire till they're close enough to be sure of your aim. One way or another, this ends tonight. Titanus Victoria. Titanus Victoria, Kay replied, sliding his hands around his machine's controls. He closed his eyes and felt a sympathetic thrum go through his nervous system, through his connector helmet and haptic suit. His machine was tugging at the leash, eager to take the fight to the enemy. And given that Cerberus was a 75-ton bipedal war machine with enough hardware mounted on his chassis to end a small-sized war, it wasn't a gentle tug. Easy, boy. Easy. They're coming. Cerberus' engine whined, and in Kay's mind he heard a growl akin to rolling thunder in a summer storm. There had been skirmishes since they'd arrived on World, Enough to whet Cerberus' appetite for more. For years, the wyverns and the warlords who engineered and controlled the creatures had kept their distance from civilization, using hit-and-run tactics to take down ships or to cause havoc among the city's population in order to squeeze them for tribute. When the titan-sworn knights had made planetfall, though, they had blown the creatures out of the sky in numbers that had made their commanders take notice. Griffith had said things would escalate quickly from that point, and three days later, it looked like his prophecy was coming true. Anti-aircraft fire lit up the gloom. While the clouds of shrapnel disoriented some of the flyers, it did little serious damage to them. Their hide was too dense for meaningful penetration, and the ground teams had learned from experience that anything short of a direct hit wasn't going to do lethal harm to the wyverns. The shells weren't meant to bring the beasts down, though. They were meant to make them mad to override the control of their masters, and to make the great beasts swoop low to breathe fire into the trenches, or to rip and tear with their massive talons. And after a few lucky shots managed to knock a number of the scaly beasts out of formation, the charge was starting to fragment. Steady, Kay whispered as he watched the targeting reticles on his screen. They picked out one beast after another, marking and tracking them as they came closer. Cerberus strained against Kay's control, weapons warming up so they were on a hair trigger. When Kay saw one of the beasts come in for a strafing run, sparks dancing over its teeth to light its deadly liquid fire, he grinned. Now! The twin high-caliber cannons mounted on Cerberus' shoulder roared to life, the rotary barrels spitting streams of death. The depleted uranium rounds found their target, hammering into the wyvern's mouth splintering its teeth and ripping through its insides. The creature's guts exploded in fiery torrents, the trauma to its insides setting off a chain reaction that turned the bioweapon into a blazing fireball before it cratered into the concrete. Neither the knight nor his machine wasted time watching the pyroplasmic display. Before their first target had fallen, they had already turned their attention to another. At this distance, the cannons were not universally deadly, but they were capable of rending the creature's wings and reaching the brain through the mouth and the eyes. With a little bit of luck, they'd even penetrate the softer scales of the throat if the round struck a weak point. More of the wyverns fell, but not many. Not enough. A red warning light flashed on Kay's peripheral. Low ammo. It was all right, Cerberus. He said, grinning as the screaming, howling creatures focused their fury on his position. We've got their attention. Make it count. Kay flicked the trigger cover off his left-hand control stick and pressed the red button. Cerberus raised its left arm and fired a stream of pure hellfire. The superheated plasma rounds were a devastating weapon, but they didn't have much of an effective range. Fortunately, the wyverns had done him the courtesy of coming straight to him. They fell to earth one after another, melting into pools of charred slag and semi-crystalline bones. The battle raged for hours as hundreds of the colossal saurians came to grips with the knights and their machines. 
blood and oil ran in rivers mingled with thousands of spent shell casings. By the time the first gray light broke over the horizon, though, there was not a single wyvern left alive. The four knights who had come to Calindris were exhausted, their machines spent and limping, with great rents in their armor and scorch marks across their steel. But they had done what they set out to do. Kay walked Cerberus over to Griffith and his machine, Atlas. Atlas had taken a knee, reducing the strain on its wounded leg and making it easier to reach the damaged machinery so it could be repaired. The canopy was open and Griffith stood on his deck, his helmet off. Kay opened his own canopy and disconnected his helmet. What's the word? Kay asked. Minimal casualties on our end, Griffith responded. He stretched and took a deep breath of the morning air. According to the station master, that ice hauler we've been waiting for has finally arrived in orbit. Seems they ran into some trouble, but with the way down clear, we can start addressing the water shortage. And? Kay asked. And they brought some friends, Griffith said, giving Kay a rueful smile. A contingent of the Knights of the Void picked them up and escorted the freighter here. They volunteered their service to mop up the insurgents and secure the port. Kay sighed and rubbed his face. It's a good thing we're going to have water soon. I'm going to need a hot shower and a cup of calf before I deal with those fanatics. Even if we are nominally on the same side. 